Hey kids, let's talk about the good old days growing up in Idaho. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Growing Up in Idaho. We're going to talk about the Brown family. Now you may recall my grandma Hicks is a Brown, married to my grandpa Harry. In the last episode we learned a little bit about how they met and got married. Well, in today's episode, we're going to hear the story about how the Browns moved to Salmon. It's really a great story, and I think you'll like it. The story was written down by Scott Brown. Some of you may remember Scott. He lived just on the outskirts of town and was kind of a famous character in Salmon for a number of years. In fact, I think that uh, the last news story written about him was regarding the uh, the big horse ride that he would take up over the mountains and salmon to check the power lines. So we'll dive right into the story and uh, we start out with the family in Wyoming and uh, they're getting ready to load up and, and move to salmon. Here it goes. We left the old Garrett Ranch located five miles west of Sheridan on Big Goose Creek early in the morning of April 2nd, 1934. We traveled in a Model T Ford touring car and an old Chevy truck. Curdy drove the Ford with Mother and some of the smaller kids. I drove the truck, loaded with a piano, stove, and some other furniture and other necessities. Anyway, the truck was overloaded. Curdy was a good driver around the farm, but out on the highway was different to her. The first few miles she had trouble staying on the road. The only time she was on it was when she crossed it. However, as the miles went by, she improved. We stopped in Billings, Montana, and I bought a used tent. I believe it was a 10 by 12, and I paid 750 for it. We camped the first night near Columbus, Montana. The second night, we stayed in a cabin camp just north of the old town of Armstead. We went to bed early that night. In the wee hours of the morning, we left this place, not to be paying the rent on the cabin, but to get over the Lemhi Pass while it was still frozen. Well, we made it to the pass and the big snow drifts. The ruts in the road were deep and rough. The old truck, being a little short on power, could not pull the hill. I put Curdy in the Ford in front, tied the truck to the Ford, but Curdy and I could not get the Chevy and the Ford synchronized. She would spin her wheels, then I would try to spin the wheels on the truck. Maybe it was the gasoline. Gas was 17 to 19 cents per gallon in those days. We were in the process of having a talk about our predicament and whether to leave the stove or the piano, maybe both. Well, Mother hadn't said much until now. Wow, she said. You will not unload the stove nor the piano. We need the stove to cook on, and we damn sure couldn't get along without the music. We will get over the hill some way. Well, very shortly, over the hill came a bunch of cowboys riding good horses with fancy hard twist ropes. One of the cowboys, I think the boss, said, Get that old Ford out of the way, and my boys will pull that old shivy over the hill, or pull the bumper off. About five cowboys dabbed their ropes on the bumper. They didn't pull the bumper off. Those horses pulled that truck out of the snowdrift, and I had to hurry to get on it. Well, it was a little rough on the truck. The piano bounced around and started to play. I think the cowboys and offered to pay. The boss said, That tune on the piano was enough pay for the pull and they took off for Montana. Curdy and the Ford, and Mom and the kids, and I, and that old Chevy truck, piano, and stove, were in Idaho, and nothing flat. We came down Railroad Canyon to Ledore, then down the Lemhi River to Salmon. I asked a fellow in the street about a place to camp. He said, Go across the river, and go up on the bar, to Jesse Creek, near the Indian camp. We did not camp near the Indians. We found a place near the creek, green and flat. We pitched our tents and decided to stay. Some people thought we were a new breed of Indians, and some said we were ragged-ass Tennesseans. 
after we got located and found which way was north and south, east and west, came easy. I went to work for a ranch three miles north of Salmon. It was called the Norton Ranch. A fellow by the name of Hunsaker owns the ranch now. Arthur Parsons was the foreman. He had one brother and one fellow by the name of Malcolm working there. There were no tractors for farm work. It was all done with horses. I was assigned a team. We were up at 5.30 a.m., fed horses and hung the harnesses on them. Breakfast was at 6 and we were in the field by 7. Gertie got herself a job at the cheese plant at the edge of the river. They still make cheese there to this day. I think her job was skimming the cow hair out of the milk. She said there were sure lots of mice there in the plant and said that every night they would come out and eat holes in the cheese. Come to find out it wasn't mice eating the cheese. It was a new kind of cheese, Swiss cheese. Well, we stayed camped on the bar until Father, Uncle Farah, Jim, and Larry came with the horses and wagons, which was 28 days later. Father leased a ranch on 4th of July Creek. It was next to the last ranch up the creek. Dad traded an old set of harnesses to a neighbor named Carl Criley for a milk cow. The hayfields on this ranch were not ideal for farming. They were side hills and some were pretty steep. We planted a patch of potatoes in one field. The spuds grew well on that side hill. When it came time to harvest them, Dad got all the kids and sacks the low end of the patch. Then he would plow them out. The spuds would roll down the hill to the sacks. There were a few of the largest potatoes that rolled so fast that the kids were unable to catch them. Some even went right through the sacks, tearing the bottom out of the sacks and jerked the kids down. Oh, it was a day of digging potatoes. Uncle Farrah got a job on the ranch I was working on. He was the irrigator. Mr. Parsons, the foreman, told me he was the only irrigator that could run water uphill. I told Mr. Parsons good Mormons could run water anywhere, uphill or down. I remember Uncle Farrah coming out of the field with the twenty-pound salmon he had speared with a shovel. Somehow the fish got out of the river into the wastewater ditch. Anyway, we had fresh salmon for supper. The fall of that year we moved to town and rented a house on Shoop Street. It was in the same spot the new bank, First Security Bank, is located now. It was kind of odd. Every so often a sheep herder would come to the door and ask where Belle Kirtley was. Then it dawned on us that Belle Kirtley was a madam, and the house was a brothel. We lived in one part of the house and parmenters in the other. That winter I hauled hay from the ranch on Fourth of July Creek to town. I would go down and load up one day and come to town early the next day. The schoolhouse was at the mouth of the creek, and the people that moved on the ranch we were on had several kids. They walked to school about three miles. The Criley boys, three of them, walked from Criley Gulch to school about three and a half miles. One afternoon I was going after hay and caught up to the Silbaugh kids, the Criley kids, and the teacher walking up the creek. I stopped and gave them a ride on the hay rack. I asked the teacher why she was walking with them, and she told me she had to go with them as far as where the Criley boys left the creek, and went up the hill to Criley Gulch. It seemed the Criley boys would knock on the other kids. I assured the teacher I would see that no fighting took place. She got off and told the Criley boys not to fight the Silbaugh kids. One Criley boy told her she wouldn't know if they did. The teacher told Paul Criley the Silbaugh kids would tell on them if they got into a fight. Paul Criley said, if they do, we will catch them and rub salt in their butts. Tough kids, huh? Walk three or four miles to school every day, carrying a lunch of fried egg and baking powder biscuits. You know, I used to give my kids a hard time when they would complain about having to walk to school in the morning, especially in the cold, when it was snowy. And they would complain and cry and moan, and I'd remind them that when I was a kid, I had to walk to school in three feet of snow, and uh, it was uphill both ways. You know, you know how that works. So to hear this story about the... Uh, 
The kids back in the early days of salmon having to walk to school three or three and a half miles, maybe four. Uh, that's quite a distance. I've walked that distance before, and it's not fun. Well, thanks for listening to the podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. The next podcast is about a family that I happen to know quite a bit about. It'll be uh, my own ancestors that moved from Kansas in about 1881 and uh, ended up in what is now Idaho. And so we'll hear their story. That's in the next episode. Thanks for listening and have a nice week. Thanks for listening. Growing up in Idaho, the good old days. 